Over the years, one of the things that has always interested me is the beta of Half-Life 2. It was really meant to be a much different game than the one we got. So seeing NPCs that were cut from the original game that were in the beta always intrigue me, and that's what we will be taking a look at in today's video. So let's go ahead and start with the first NPC, and that's going to be the Antlion Grub. So here's the standard one, the one we got, and I'll go ahead and pull out the camera to get a good look at them. So here's the one we got, and then here's the beta one. Interesting, you could definitely see the textures are quite... I mean, even the model's pretty bad. I mean, just looking at the polygons, like, wow. They really upgraded this model, but something about the old one looks fatter and, I don't know, more adorable to me. It looks more like an actual real-life grub. Now, what happens when you let them loose? They do do different things. This one obviously doesn't move, it just sits there, screams at you, you squash it. This one, though, runs away, and then does this for eternity, until you squash him. But before we take a look at the next NPC, I want to go ahead and talk about today's sponsor. Alright, let's talk about the Opera GX browser. First up, let's talk about the integrated social media channels, whether it's Twitter or Instagram or anything in between. We've got all your social media channels, and we got Discord built right into the panel. So whether you're browsing the web or doing anything else, you'll always keep your social media right at hand. Now how good is a browser if you cannot customize it? That's why we got custom animated wallpapers. So on top of all the other types of customization you can do in Opera GX, we also got animated wallpapers which run really smoothly in the background of your browser. And this feature definitely brings your browser to life. Now maybe you're a little hesitant to switch because you don't want to lose all your extensions. Well, we got Google Chrome extensions on deck. In addition to Opera having its own extension store, we also have the Google Chrome extensions, which is pretty damn sick. Or maybe you're a little worried about all your settings not coming through. Well, no worries because we have the quick import tool, which allows you to quickly import all your settings from your previous browser. Whether it be browsing history, bookmarks, and cookies, they're all coming on over. We also got GX Mobile, which can be connected to the desktop version using the flow feature where you can send files, videos, links, and notes between browsers with just a single click. And of course, we got GX Corner to stay up to date with game releases, gaming news, and free mobile games. I want to thank Opera GX so much for sponsoring this video. I'll put a link in the description. Check it out. It's a browser you definitely do not want to miss. Big thanks to Opera GX, they always coming through. So this is the Beta Antlion Guard, and this is the standard one we got in the final game. We can see that the colors are a lot more vibrant on the final release, while this one seems more dark and grim, which, in my opinion, is more indicative of the beta itself. So we can really see Half-Life 2 was really meant to be a much darker game than the one we got. Anyway, in terms of health, they could not be more different. 3,500 to 500, it's pretty staggering. So let's go ahead and let the beta one loose, and let's see if we can notice any differences. The first thing I notice is he takes you out in one hit, which I think the original took like two or three hits. I mean, he's supposed to be strong, but Damn, this guy's nigh OP now. Now shooting him doesn't actually, wait, does it, what? It doesn't even hurt him. You need to use explosives. Wow. Imagine fighting this in Half-Life 2. You would run out of rockets so damn quick. But we can see that it's going to take a lot of, well, explosives to do anything to this guy. That's why we got the admin gun. Wait. My god, how tanky is this thing? But we can see he does have a ragdoll, and he pretty much dies just like the one in the final release. Next up, we have the Antlion Guardian, and now we see a massive difference in design. The Antlion Guardian was kind of like the holy grail of the Antlions. You know, he is this beautiful, shining color that definitely differs from the original Antlion Guard, even though he's called Antlion Guard. Wait, what? Here's the standard Antlion Guard. You can see there is quite a big difference between them, but then this is the beta version. The beautiful, striking electric blue color. Oh, I mean, I'm pretty biased because I love blue, but this is definitely the one I prefer over this. Now letting him out, let's see. Oh, he is quick. Damn, this dude's got legs. Other than that, he pretty much acts like your standard Antlion Guardian. It's just, Jesus, he is so fast. Let's take him out and see if there's any difference. 
Oh yeah, he is tanky. I don't know why he's so immune to admin guns. Oh, well, maybe I should have done left click. Okay then, that was some death animation. Next up we have the antlion worker. So here's the one we got in the final release. I thought that the leg design was a bit different, but no, it is like identical. I never noticed how weird that is. I've always only seen them from the front, I figured they had like a back end, but they really don't, it just kind of cuts off. And the beta one has that same design, but the beta one has this more orange brown color to it, compared to like the silver gray color that this one has. So overall, I definitely like the final release better, just this color looks really cool. So let's see what he does when we let him loose. Does he act any different? Well, he actually does act just like the final release. He spits out this kind of acid projectile that does some decent corrosive damage to your health. And he doesn't have crazy amounts of health himself, but uh, he does do some pretty good damage. So let's go ahead and take him out and see. Yep, he explodes. Next up, we have the beta fast head crabs. This is the final release version, and this is the beta one. More of a gross... Um, dare I say scrotum looking colored <laughs> compared to the final release which is more of like this like lighter color but with some prominent blood shown on it. This one just looks like a moldy potato. But overall it does not act really all that different from a standard fast head crab. It's quick just like the fast head crab is and it jumps at you like, well, a head crab. Oh yeah, boys, it's that time. We got the fast zombie. The beta one, we can see, looks grotesquely different than the one we got. I don't actually know which one's worse. The one that looks like a corpse that's been dead for a week, or the one that looks like a human with his flesh stripped off. I mean, when I first saw the fast zombie as a kid, I thought it was extremely disturbing and one of the scariest things I've ever seen. While this, on the other hand, is disturbing in its own way. Alright, let's go ahead and let him loose and see if he differs from the standard one. Oh, nope, it's even the same animation. Now what if we shoot him in the head? You can see that the fast head crab does jump off and then he just becomes his own thing. I want to see the face textures though. Oh god, this. This is definitely pretty disturbing. Alright, what do you guys say we speed things along here? We have the standard head crab and the beta head crab. And I gotta say, I know the textures look way better and the models just better on the new one. But I love the blood on the face of the head crab. You can see blood kind of on the bottom. It is a bit more subtle on the final head crab. But still, this just looks metal as hell, man. Like, I would have loved this blood texture or this amount of blood on the final release. But outside of that, it, it's pretty much just your standard head crab. The poison head crab. So here's the final release. Here's the beta model. You know the thing I love about this, by the way, guys? I love seeing, like, you can actually see the transition from Half-Life 1 to Half-Life 2. Because a lot of these models have sounds and even have, like, models that look like they could fit almost into Half-Life 1. But they're just a little bit more refined so that you can tell it's from a newer game. It's this weird in-between. Anyway, this one's making a much more annoying sound, although it is quite a bit weaker. So, let's see what it does when it bites us. The normal one takes us down to one health. Interestingly, this one does not do that. So, the funny thing is, the final release is even stronger than the beta one. And now we go to the beta zombie. Wow, what a difference. So, I don't know if this one's supposed to have all of the poison head crabs on its back like this one does. Because they're both hunched over, so it looks like that he would have that. But maybe that just wasn't added in the mod. It's hard to say, but um, yeah, I love the poison zombie because we have all these little poison head crabs, kind of like possum style, on the back of its main host. And then this one's just kind of hunched over, looking all weird. And then letting him loose. This is interesting. I don't know if this is indicative of the actual beta one, if like they got all the animations and all the characteristics from the beta, but look how quick he is compared to the original. So I'm sure you guys know what a beta zombie looks like when he runs. He is not this quick. So that's pretty impressive. And then taking him out is really no sweat. Okay, now we go into territory that is kind of unique. The red antlion. That is just weird to me. There was a red antlion? Now what we can do is compare it to the standard antlion, but there's another one that does actually compare to this one. And that is the sand antlion. So we have a red antlion and a sand antlion. I gotta say, 
The red antlion looks almost as good as the final release, so I wonder why we didn't get this one. However, the sand one on the other hand, actually, you know what? I don't know. I think I like the sand better than the original. Anyway, I like this. Maybe it's just more uniform. Maybe that's just what I like. Let's go ahead and see what the red one can do. And while we're at it, we'll do the sand one as well. I mean, no surprise there. They really just act like antlions because surprise, surprise, the beta NPCs acted pretty similarly to the final release ones with just some minute changes. The big ones, of course, being the models. And just like a standard antlion, they really are no trouble to take. What the hell is wrong with this? And next up, we have the Beta Vortigaunt. So here's the final release. Obviously, they're our friends because, surprise, the Vortigaunts only did the Combine's bidding, and that's why they were our enemy. But once they are free to do what they want, they are actually kind, gentle people. And we can see the Beta one looks a little bit different. In fact, quite a bit different than the final release. It looks like there's more detail in the wrinkles on his skin compared to the final release. We get a more smooth look. I guess it's because this one kind of looks... Um, I'm gonna be honest, gross. And letting them loose, I mean, no surprise. They just kind of do their own thing. They're friends. Although the one that we just spawned from the final release just kind of sits there. This one walks around, which is kind of cool to see. And now we go into the beta zombie, and wow, they could not be more different. I mean, in terms of, like, their stature and the way they act, I'm, I assume they're pretty similar. However, look at the detail on the final release. All those different blood textures and everything. This one just looks so bland, like that... That brown jacket, it just doesn't look nearly as good. So other than that, he's going to act exactly like your standard zombie. Ow. Once again, recommend shooting him in the head so you don't got to deal with a little, little shit, aka a head crab. Get over here. Ah, the zombine. Gotta love the zombine. And I don't know which one I prefer more. I mean, they both look pretty bloody. What the hell? But I think I might like the beta one more. I mean, it's more dark and grim. In fact, that's kind of a theme here I noticed, is the beta ones seem to be more grim and dark looking than the standard. Letting him go, oh my god, he's quick. <laughs> There's no way the original one's just like that. Oh, Shiza, they're fighting each other. Oh, he pulled out the grenade. Uh-oh. Yep. Oh, you know what, though? The beta still wins because the head crab is still alive. And next up, we have the brick bat what is this it acts kind of like the baby head crab in half-life one and uh what a strange npc all right guys it's time for tears this one just makes me sad are you telling me the hound i was gonna be in half-life 2 <laughs> they took out my boy okay actually the bull squid's my boy but um, I love the Hound Eye. I would have loved to see him in Half-Life 2. So the fact that he was cut, it breaks my heart, man. However, we could still see his representation from the beta here. And he looks a lot like the Half-Life 1 variant. And there you have it, my friends. That was the Half-Life 2 beta NPC pack. Definitely let me know what you think down below. Leave a like and subscribe. Once again, I want to thank Opera GX. Definitely check out the link down below to try out the best gaming browser on the market, in my opinion. And as always, guys, stay awesome. Links are down below. I'll see you in the next video. And until next time, thanks for watching and farewell.